So stand. Now you want to drop. I just be. I mean, as soon as I hit record, how can I help you? So stand. Now you're drinking Coca-Cola because you don't want to have to go back on hookmeup.com and start over again. Boy, bye. Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl P Hope and I am back with another episode of Love After Lockup. It's the review you already know what time it is. Anyway, I hope you all had a fabulous week and also enjoying your weekend. You know I'm not trying to hold you long, so let's jump right into the mess. <laughs> y'all no cap i have honestly tried to record this video four or five times at this point and i know y'all just saw all my lights go out now i started recording this last night as soon as the show went off but i didn't finish so i didn't want it to be dark in one part of the video and then daylight savings time in the other part of the video I'm not sure what's going on right now, so I'm going to be right back. All right, take number 572,011. Action! <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to just get right into it because who knows what's going to happen at this point. Um, Stan and Lisa, y'all... <laughs> Lisa is back ball headed. Lisa's back ball headed. She's also in a hotel room because y'all remember Stan told her to get the fuck. Okay. Um, he was drunk. He was irritated. He was horny. And you know, if she wasn't willing to give it up, she was going to have to give it on out. Okay. So she's at the hotel and she is just talking about how um, she's still very much concerned for her son. Um, I think they show like where she was trying to get in contact with her son and it looks like they have probably been talking via text message, but he was not over there at the hotel room with her. So I don't know if, you know, he just didn't really want to be bothered like that or what the issue was. But yeah, she's still trying to be a mom nevertheless. And she said that her feelings really got hurt when Stan told her that she was a bad mom and you know not that he was saying anything that wasn't the truth but her thing is don't keep throwing that shit in my face and i and that's definitely understandable especially when you see somebody making an attempt to get their shit together like you know what i'm saying don't kick me while i'm down yeah i know what i did in the past was not the right decisions i've been open and honest about that but don't get drunk and take this opportunity to jab me with my own tea. You know what I'm saying? Spray me with my own tea. Like, no, we're not about to do that. So, yeah, she said that her feelings got hurt when, um, when Stan made that very harsh comment. And, you know, she just don't know what to say about Stan's ass at this point. Then it cuts to a scene at Stan's house. And Dash done pulled his ass up over there, okay? So Dash pulls up and he's like, you know, hey buddy, how you been? How, you know, how was, how's it going out at Lisa's home? And he's like, uh, you know, not really as expected. So they go up on the porch and, um, and Stan starts filling Dash in about the drunken escapades from the night before and how he really don't know, um, where him and Lisa stand at this point. And Dash is very much me. You know what I'm saying? You could tell that Dash is a real friend because your real friends are not your friends. That's always going to yes man you to death. Okay. That's always going to be that ride or die and agree with whatever you got going on. Even if they know in the back of their head that you're wrong as a fuck. Like, no. Um, Dash is very much me. And he let Stan's ass know that... 
my dude, you're in the wrong. You were wrong for telling her that she's a bad mom. And, you know, you seem to like this girl oh so much. You done already spent all this money on her, all this time on her. You might as well pick your droopy balls up, grab them, and, you know what I'm saying, man up and apologize to Lisa because you were in the wrong. And he was like, you know, yeah, I, you know, I need to get that together. So... He's stewing on that and Dash, you know, takes his ass on back to the house to his woman that he didn't find off of um, hookmeup.com. So that goes on. And then the next scene, I think, was when it cut to Lisa um, pulling up on her homegirl to get her hair done. Okay. So Lisa pulls up and she's got all of this hair in her hand and just from me looking at the fucking hair i said oh my god this is about to be a synthetic mess lisa let's talk now i don't give you um professional unities i've never gave that you know what i'm saying that that's never been the case when i cut this camera on but at the same time i feel like you know i do a pretty decent job so and all of my shit is, is very inexpensive. It's very inexpensive. It's definitely on your budget. And it's most certainly on um, Stan's budget. So, I just want to say, I don't know who is leading you down the wrong road. But I feel like the same person that led Stan to the black hair boutique to get you some wigs is the same person that led you to a black beauty supply store to pick up a whole bunch of 613 platinum blonde synthetic hair that was totally not the move okay it was totally not the move you look like a fucking brat's dog i don't know i don't know i hated it i absolutely hated it now i'm not saying that your homegirl installed the micro links um in the wrong way i think that your hair was extremely short to be trying to get that um that's first of all i feel like you know you didn't have quite enough hair and she was trying to make some shit work because i'm pretty sure at that point the beauty supply store had closed and that's how you ended up with that fucking headband on but um you know either way it went you looked it was a hot ass mess but i'm gonna let you live contact me we can do you know i'm sure i don't live in the same state as you so we cannot go shopping together but you know i'm not going to lead you wrong because i'm not a fake bitch you know what i'm saying just like us black women can pick up this very much shiny glossy kim zosiak looking ass hair and it looks a goddamn fool on our head you can do the same thing and you showed us that in this particular episode that white women can put on black women's hair and it looks a fool it just looks a goddamn fool now i could have put that same hair in my head and i could have slayed it but you my friend cannot do that with your silky straight slippery ass hair it just was not the tea okay so i need you to you know what i'm saying zoom call me we could do a zoom meeting um google duo um i think we can even see each other per, a video on, on ig you know what i'm saying but i just want to take you to where the um caucasian hair is being distributed so that we can get you looking like a um you know very much professional human being very much ready for tv because they're leading you down the wrong road sis and i'm tired of them playing in your face i really am tired of them playing in your face so just you know call me maybe Anyway, Stan is back at home and he is getting all spruced up. He's got on his Sunday best because he is actually getting ready to meet Lisa down at this restaurant because he just really wants to have a face-to-face -face and talk to her because he done stood on everything that Dash done said, okay? So, um, that's all fine and dandy. And so, when he gets there, he's like, hi, you know, my name is Stan. I have a reservation for two, da 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 da, -da. And he's just sitting there twiddling his thumbs because Lisa ass is not there. And then a few minutes later, we hear this clockety, 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 
clockety. And the cameraman is so shady because they started at the feet and they went all the way up to the top. And, you know, so Lisa very much came in looking like a fucking baby giraffe. Okay. Um, she was trying to give us pretty woman. You know, she was trying to give us very much Tyra Banks ripping the motherfucking runway. But um, she was definitely giving us um, Gary the giraffe. Um, it was a fool. It was a fool, but Stan loved it, y'all. Stan was like, he Im immediately got a hard on when he realized that, goddamn, this is Lisa. So, she comes in, sits down, and he's like, um, yeah, like, wow, you look breathtaking. Like, this is the best that you've ever looked. And she said, I know. <laughs> the fuck I know. I done been up all night getting my hair done. I done bought this dress that still got the tag in the back because I'm about to take this hoe back. You know, uh, these heels are very much hurting my feet, but I have to let you know what you about to miss out on. And so, everything that Stan is saying to her, she is just really chomping his ass off because she said what you're not going to do is skate past the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is the fact that you talked to me like I wasn't shit. You put me out your house and you was acting like a drunk bitch that couldn't control her liquor. You know what I'm saying? And he said, you know what? You're absolutely right. Let me take this opportunity to apologize. And so once Lisa got the apology that she was looking for, he immediately turned right back into a hornball and he was like, you know, I'm just ready to take you home. And yeah, no, I think we should get out of here right now. And so I couldn't really tell what Lisa was thinking in that moment because she was giving him eyes like, okay, fine. I'll go home and put your motherfucking saggy ass, soggy ass balls in my mouth. I'll do that. Or if I couldn't tell if she was looking at you like, <laughs> yeah, what I'm about to do is play your ass much like Nicole be doing Deontay, get a little more money out of you, and then I'm headed back to the motherfucking hotel room because I'm still upset at what the fuck you said, and it's not going to be that easy to get in these draws. I don't know if it's going to go left or right because from the previews that they're showing of Stan and Lisa next week, they about to be right back into it, child. So, I really don't know um, if he's actually still going to get him some ass or no. Nah. But, for this week, that was Stan and Lisa. <laughs> Woo, child. Deontay and Nicole. Y'all know, I just, I automatically get tickled anytime I think about Deontay. Just Deontay. Oh, God. Lord have mercy. Deontay and Nicole. Y'all remember last week he had dropped Nicole's ass off at the hair salon so that she could get some weave put off of her head and so she could feel like a bad bitch. So she done got her hair done. He pulls back up with the dress that she asked him to go out and purchase and she changes her clothes. She comes back out in the dress and she's like, hey baby, how do you like my hair? But he ain't even seen her hair yet because he can't keep his eyes off of her titties in this dress. So, he's like, um, yeah, you know, yeah. And she's like, um, my hair is up here. Like, do you like my hair? And he's like, yeah, baby, you know what I'm saying? Your hair look good, but you know what I'm saying? God damn, you know, you just boom, bam, pow. And so, they... I, I'm assuming that he paid for the services because, you know, the, the proper authorities didn't show up. So, of course, his paymaster ass them paid for however much it was to get her hair done. And then they are headed out to a bar. But they have a third wheel with them. Sorry, y'all. Uh, the mood is fan a little bit. Um, They have a third wheel with them because, don't forget, the best friend wanted to go out that night. So, um, the best friend is with them. They pull up to a bar, and shortly after that, Deontay's best friend, Derek, shows up. And I said, dun dun dun, dun. it is Derek for the win. Like, yes, this is cute, little double date type of situation. And Derek said, no, bitch, I ain't on no double date. I am here to grill Nicole. And I said, okay, do you, you know what I'm saying? Do you handle your business? So, 
So, um, Derek gets to the table and you can already tell he's being shady as a fuck because he's like, well, hello, it is nice to meet you, Nicole. It really wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. But yeah, so Nicole is like, yes, you know, nice to meet you too. So everybody's playing nice at the table. He shook the ladies' hands and then he went right in with the questions. He was like, so... Um, you know, I just, I just want to see what kind of intentions you have for my boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my good homie right here. So I don't need you trying to play him. You know what I'm saying? Like a motherfucking yo-yo. So I'm trying to figure out why you've been out for three days and I'm just now seeing you. Nicole really could not answer this question because she couldn't keep her eyes off of the front door. So, she's sitting here staring at the front door and Derek is like, who are you looking for? She said, oh, nobody. First she said nobody and then she finally admits that she's looking for her friend Tia. She's like, you know, I, just, I invited one of my other friends up here named Tia that, you know, we was locked up with. And so, I guess this made the light bulb go off in Derek's head and he was like, um, is Tia somebody that you slept with? And Nicole instantly started smiling. She didn't say shit, but she just gave this little sly ass, sneaky ass smile. And everybody at the table knew that that meant, yes, this is somebody that, you know, I gave, you know what I'm saying, I gave her ass a little bit. Everybody knew the answer to the question was yes, except for Deontay's dumb ass, okay? Because at this point, Derek had done melted under the table a little bit, clutching his pearls. And he was like, whoa, like, this girl got a lot of nerve inviting somebody that she done slept with to a table with her current partner. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? You are a pimp in your own motherfucking rhyme. And, and that's just that on that. So, Derek is, at this point, he is really trying to figure some shit out. So, he's like, so just, just keep it a book. How many bitches... Put the strap on and gave your ass the business while you was locked up. And she was like, well, um, I, I think in total. And he's like, God damn, this bitch got a count. So then he looked over at Deontay and he was like, bruh, whatever number she about to come up with, listen, you take that number, you times it by three, you carry the five, and there goes your answer. And she was like, nah, like, just keeping it a book. Like, I probably was with six people while I was locked up. And so he was like, oh, well, like, this was just a motherfucking orgy, okay? And so at this point, Deontay is looking ignorant because he said, wow, you know what I'm saying? You are in there really getting your motherfucking porn hub on. But you won't even let me look at the pussy. Like, that's just first of all. And second of all, we've had this conversation before. And you told me that you have not been with anybody while you've been locked up. Because you guys were not allowed to have any type of contact with each other. So, you know, I've been holding on to that of what you told me. But now I see that all of that was a lie. So, this is making Deontay really have to throw the drinks back because he don't know if he should just get up and walk away from this situation or if he should just still really just hold on to what he got going on. Like, he's he's conflicted at this time. But Derek is applying pressure on Nicole and he is not letting his foot off of her neck. So, Nicole says, you know what? When it's hot in the kitchen, you take your motherfucking ass on somewhere so Nicole said she needed to be excused from the table and she stepped outside now at this point I guess <laughs> I guess it got a little awkward at the table because you know Nicole was already trying to tell the best friend to shut the fuck up because she was trying to help the situation but whatever she was saying was actually making the shit worse so Nicole hit her with the motherfucking hand and she just kind of looked over like Okay, bitch, you ain't got to put your hand in my face. You know what I'm saying? You know how I feel about hands being close to my face because you saw that motherfucking black eye, bitch. So, don't give me too much. And so, best friend shut up. And then, 
And then, you know, Derek was just at the... Derek was just at the table firing off. So at this point, Deontay was like, you know what? Let me go outside and find this bitch because I'm about to get some straightening. And I said, you ain't about to straighten a goddamn thing. And he said, okay, watch this. So he took his inchworm looking ass outside and he get out there and she's still talking on the phone. And he like, who you on the phone with? She was like, I'm just talking to my friend. I'm trying to see if she's coming or not. Like, bro, chill out. Why are you talking to me like this? And so then that's when, you know what I'm saying, he was finally trying to, you know, put a little air in his chest and try to figure out what's going on. So he asked her for the 40th time, like, you know, so this girl that you're trying to see, is she coming up here? Like, y'all really slept together? And she's like, yes, bro, I already told you that we slept together. But the thing is, this was before me and you. And he was like... Well, if that's the case, if you out here doing all this, then why is it so hard for you to just even sleep overnight at my house? And she said, because I told you that I'm just, I'm not comfortable yet. And he said, oh, really? But you're also comfortable that to keep taking my money. And I said, yes, finally, 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 you put your balls in your hand and you told this bitch what it was like. Nicole, you keep playing this game like you just so innocent and like your body is just like motherfucking Mother Mary and, you know, you don't be doing no whole bunch of this and that, but you really out here slutting all over town, but you're not willing to slut for me. But I'm the one that's making it rain on your ass. So I'm confused. Are you scared that once I get that dry ass box, I'm not going to give you no more money? I'm not going to be willing to do for you? Is that what you're scared of? let me know you know she was like well i never asked you to spend no money on me i would have still been your friend we we, we would have still been together because i love you like it doesn't have anything to do with your money but you know what i'm saying she started panicking at that point so she let him know look okay 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 i will stay overnight with you tonight i said yeah bitch <laughs> That motherfucking tune changed so fast because she saw all the motherfucking green bats just floating away, floating up out of her hand. And she changed that tune real quick. She said, I'll stay the night with you. I'll stay the night with you, but I'm still not making you any promises if we're going to sleep together or not. And he was like, that's fine. All I'm asking you is to just do right. And he was like, so you know what I'm saying? We're about to put on a motherfucking happy face. We're going to go back in this restaurant and, you know, we're going to get this shit together. So, you know, they both put on this fake ass representation. All of this happy, happy, joy, joy. Like, you know what I'm saying? We just went out there and made all the way back up. They played nice in front of best friend and Derek. And they was like, okay, look, we about to wrap this thing up because we ready to go home. So that's how they kicked it. Then, oh, but before that, um, Deontay also made, um, a statement about how he knows that people are, you know, just kind of jealous of the fact that he has a girl like Nicole. Deontay, let me tell you something. I've already gave props where props are due. Yes, Nicole is a cute girl. You know what I'm saying? Her face is not giving me, um, ooh la la. You know, it, it'll do for a screw. Um, but, you know, she does have a really, really nice body. I have already gave her her flowers for that. But um, the thing about the thing is I don't ever want you to feel like you have to have some kind of bad bitch to make you feel like a man. You know what I'm saying? Don't feel like you got to have some motherfucker IG model on your arm to make you feel like you chewing it because that's not the case. Let me tell you something about my man. This nigga's fine as shit, right? Um, you know, athletic build, tall chocolate, you know what I'm saying? Just, just every goddamn thing, all right? But he's with me. You know what I'm saying? He is with my extra large ass. And um, it's not because he has a preference for BBWs or none of that. Because the women in his past look nothing like me. Okay, so, so that's not the case. And so, you know, I just asked him one day. I'm like, 
what the hell made you go for me? Somebody like you go for somebody like me. And he said, you know, that is hands down. It's your personality. It's the love that you show. It's the friendship that we built. It's, it's everything. It's the sex. It's, it's, it's a combination of everything. And the point is, the point that I'm trying to make is, we probably don't get no whole bunch of oohs and ahs when we out together. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are not here for the big girls. And that's fine. But you need to find you somebody that you not just worried about, oh, they're going to be so impressed when we're out in public. Because if you're being treated like shit in private, then does it really make sense? Ask yourself that. Does it really make sense? Is it really worth me spending all my time, all my money, all of my goddamn energy into somebody who is a real bad bitch out in public, but she's also a bitch in private? And I'm not reaping none of the benefits of having a bad bitch besides the point that people will ooh and ah. But the fucked up part of that situation for you is you might get the oohs and ahs while you're out in public. And, you know, you might have a couple of people saying, oh, my God, how did he get her? But there's also somebody in that same room saying, well, I don't know how much he got her because I already hit that bitch or I already got that whole number or I've been eating her cat. So I don't really know how beneficial this situation is for you, but I'm just saying everything that I just said just to say that, <laughs> listen, just find somebody that loves Deontay for Deontay. Stop looking for these women to be a trophy on your arm because it's really not giving that. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you're putting way too much money and effort into this situation because you think that is giving that. But it's really not. It's really not. Um, so just do better is all I'm trying to say. Anyway, getting back into the scene. They get to the house, they're sitting down on the sofa, he's rubbing on the cold feet or whatnot, and then he says, um, you know, come on over, baby, like, you know what I'm saying, sit in my lap, you looking all good in this dress and shit, so, you know what I'm saying, he's rubbing all on her, he's grabbing her on the ass, they're kissing, I said, okay, alright, Nicole is trying to make herself comfortable with the situation, and then, at one point, he said, you know what, well, you know what I'm saying, goddamn, you just done woke up the beast, so, I'm ready to go back here and make the magic happen, alright, I'm just trying to figure it out. And Nicole says, look, you know, I told you that I would spend the night, but I'm just not comfortable with us going that far. I don't feel like we're ready to go that far. Like, I just don't. So I'm going to sleep in the guest room and I need you to go in your room. He was upset, but he said that he was going to respect her wishes. So he took his ass off in there. She went in the guest room and she's in there in her bra and a thong. And as soon as she gets ready to slide in bed, her phone starts ringing. It's Zach motherfucking ass. Zach is calling and cooing and con in her ear. Now, first of all, Zach, let me tell you what lets me know that you ain't shit and you just thought about that ass. Because you called Nicole on the late night tip. You called Nicole on the late night tip. You called her on some booty call type of shit. You was ready to come swoop by, pick her up, and do your due deals. But she was in another location at that time. So she was not able to. And she was like, yes, but I really want to see you. I miss you so much. Da -da 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 -da. And then she hung up the phone and got back in the bed. Meanwhile, back in the master bedroom, Deontay is pulling out Nicole Jr. because she done, um, you know what I'm saying, crunk up his engine and now he about to have blue balls if he don't handle his business. So he pulls out Nicole Jr. and yeah, and that's a good night. So once again, this is another week of Deontay getting no action and spending all of his money. So, you know. Congratulations, Deontay. I don't know what else the fuck to tell you at this point. Oh, <sighs> Nicole and Deontay, y'all wear me out. Brittany and Ray. Okay, y'all, they had a really, really short scene this week because um, 
Ray called Britney to say that, you know, they're actually letting me bring that ass home. Okay. So Britney is surprised, but very, very happy at the same time. Um, Ray says that he has been locked up at the halfway house for two months at this point, And they're going to go ahead and let him come on home. So, uh, let's see. Ray says that he will definitely be on home confinement, which means he will have on an ankle monitor and it will not allow him to go anywhere. The furthest he can go is a couple of yards outside of the front door and a couple of yards um, outside in the backyard. But other than that, he cannot move. Um, I think he did say how long it'll be like that, but I don't remember what it was, so I don't want to lie. But anyway... It'll at least be a couple of weeks that that will be his situation. Like, he literally cannot leave Britney's house. So, uh, Britney says that she is super excited about the fact that he will be stuck in the house. And it screamed insecurity for me. I'm not even going to lie. Like, it made me feel like you're happy that you're not going to have to worry about him being outside of the house, what he's doing, who he's with who he's around, you will really be able to just really hone in on him like a fucking hovering ass eagle over her babies, okay? That's what you was giving me. So, um, yeah, and she also says that she can um, already see wedding bells and she's going to start making wedding preparations. I don't understand how you see any of that when... Her family has no idea that Ray is being released to her house. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that her mom doesn't want to meet Ray at all. You know what I'm saying? Ray, uh, Mama Brittany said to hell with Ray, okay? And she ain't even met his ass yet. So, I don't understand how the hell she see wedding bells. But whatever, we're going to let her live. Um, the day that uh, Ray actually gets released... Britney's sister is at her house early as fuck in the morning doing her makeup. And Britney says that the sister is the only person out of her side of the family that knows that Ray is coming home today and that he is actually going to be moving in with her. She says she trusts her sister not to say anything. She better not say anything. And I was like, okay, you know, the... <laughs> You know, your sister probably does have that loyalty for you, but this is TV, honey. So, they probably, you know, they could have slid a couple dollars in your sister's pocket to go ahead and, and accidentally spill the beans. I don't know that to be true, but, um, you know, we'll definitely be following the story. So, yeah, she gets her makeup done and she heads out to pick up Ray from the halfway house. Now, when she gets up to the, there to the halfway house, she's just smiling and cheesing because she's standing outside of the car and she says she can actually see Ray. So, he's getting ready to come out. So, she is just uber excited. And, bitch, this was the scene that took me out because as she's sitting there smiling, Grandmama Ray pulls up in her truck smiling from ear to ear ready to pick up her grandbaby. And y'all, I don't know why it tickled me so bad, but it sent me, it sent me to the king because I just want to know, like, Ray, whose car are you getting in? The boy is mine. Like, you know, are you leaving with your BFF grandma or are you leaving with your bitch? I don't know. I don't know, but that is, that was the beginning and the end of Britney and Ray's scene for last week. So I told y'all it was short and sweet, but grandma took the cake for me because grandma pulled up on two wheels like, <laughs> bring them out, bring them out. It's hard to yell when the bell rails in your mouth. Rachel and Doug. Okay. Um, yeah, it was definitely nothing funny about Rachel and Doug this week. They start off at the house and um, Rachel is definitely highly irritated with Doug's ass, his hard-headed ass, because um, she's trying to tell him that she doesn't feel like it's a good idea for them to travel down to his parents' house. 
but he is determined to go see his dad to go see his family because none of them know that he is out and i think um the holiday is father's day i think that's what this is um he said it's father's day and it would just be amazing to surprise his family with letting them know that you know guess what guess who's home so he thinks that this is a super cute idea hold on y'all and um so he said hell or high water he's going to his parents house so it's like bitch either you coming or not so even though rachel was completely and totally against it of course she went of course she went because she's rachel so yeah doug rachel and little dougie um all pull up at the parents house and uh doug is ducked down in the back seat because of course he wants to surprise everybody so of course when they pull up at first it's just rachel and little dougie they get out they say their hellos and then a couple of seconds later big doug pops out and everybody is like oh my god you're home da -da 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 -da. so um yeah everybody's all super excited at the fact that dougie's home they're doing all their hugs and kissing and welcoming in everybody was excited about it except for doug's mom okay we never saw doug's mom because i guess she uh i don't know if she was already outside when they pulled up and then when she saw his ass she punched it onto the inside you know what i'm saying she hit it and um she said don't let his ass in my house because doug said that his mom is um just really hung up and disappointed with him at um the decisions that he has decided to make you know what i'm saying he doesn't value life he doesn't value his freedom which ultimately means he doesn't respect his family and mama don't want nothing to do with his ass so yeah that's where he's at with the mom and him and his dad also had a very sentimental moment um, they had one point where they hugged and the dad did not want to let Doug go. You know what I'm saying? The dad was just holding on to him for dear life. They were both um, exchanging tears. But yeah, so they're hugging and Doug let us know that his dad looks completely different because he said his dad used to be very big, very muscular, and he always had these hands that anybody would be scared of. And I can believe that. I can kind of see that. Um, but he said that his dad doesn't look anything like he looked five years ago because his dad is actually suffering from, um, I think it was liver cancer or liver failure or something like that. But, um, yeah, so they're just really sad about thinking about the fact that his dad is not going to be around much longer because of his condition. And, um, Doug also lets dad know that he wants to make it right with his mom. You know what I'm saying? He wants to let mama know that I'm not that ignorant ass bastard that I once was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, um, I, I know now that life is precious and I, I need to be here for little Dougie. You know, uh, Rachel has come along and just completely changed my outlook on life. And I'm just ready to be a grown ass man and do what, what it is that I need to do. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, dad is like, I definitely feel like you and mom need to have that conversation. But I'm assuming that that day was not the day because then it cut to a scene where um doug's sister ashley brings up a conversation about these letters that little dougie used to write and little dougie immediately jumped on the defense and he was like you better not go bring out those letters if you bring them out i will never talk to you again and you can put that on jesus and all of his disciples i'll never speak to your ass again and I said, all right, little Dougie, like whatever those letters were talking about, he did not want them exposed. Okay. And so he said it with his chest, but Auntie Ashley didn't give a damn about that because even though she did not go get the letters, she still kind of spilled the tea a little bit about what the letters were referring to. And she said, yeah, he just talked a lot about how you know he hated you as a father and he got a fucked up life and etc etc 
and Doug was like, okay, like these are things that he's already verbalized to me out of his own mouth. That's first of all. And you know, second of all, how the fuck can I blame him? So, okay, like you're telling me about these letters for what? You know what I'm saying? Doug didn't really care about that. But the other sister had kind of caught the T on why Ashley was trying to bring that up. So she goes over to Doug in private and she's like, look, I just want to be a real bitch and let you know that Ashley was not really treating little Dougie the best while you were gone. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was just a lot of mistreatment going on there. And Doug doesn't want to hear none of it. Doug was like, look, she did the best that she could. Um, I know that she loved my son. You're not going to be sitting here talking crazy about my sister and however she handled her business with my child. And so the sister is still going on and on about how, you know, it just, shit just wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Like Ashley is really out here giving your son the one twos and, you know, just ask him about it. And so at this point he gets mad and he's like, how the fuck can you be sitting up here talking all this shit about Ashley when you ain't do shit? And she was like, well, you know that I couldn't step in and take little Dougie because I'm married to a felon. So it was no way that I could. You know what I'm saying? I did my one twos when I could, but it was no way that I could get him. And so he was basically like, all right, well then shut the fuck up, bitch. Those were his words verbatim. And I said, okay, this went left really quickly. So at this point, little Dougie is sitting at the table crying because his aunt done tried to put him on blast. Now his daddy done raised his blood pressure. His grandpa sitting over here. Basically, everybody that's out in the yard is looking crazy, especially Rachel, because we already know she not finna jump in and try to defuse shit. She just sitting there looking scared because she don't know if they about to get the fight in. If Doug about to go back to jail because he ain't even got no business being down there to begin with. So, you know, it was, the whole thing was just crazy. But, um, that part is going to pick up the next time that we see Doug and Rachel. So, I'll let y'all know how that ends. Lord, have mercy. Little Dougie, I, listen, my nerves is bad and I can't take on no more kids. But, just know that you do be in my prayers when I go to bed at night. Because, I just really hate this for you. I hate it so much. <sighs> Last but not least, Jeff and Anissa. <laughs> They're starting to become my favorite. Anissa is starting to become my favorite because, bitch, I'm trying to figure out if you slow or not. Like, you, you're, you're creeping up. You're creeping up past Deontay here just a little bit. So, anyway, y'all, let's get into it. Um, Anissa goes to pick up Jeff from the halfway house because she said today is the day. That she will get to spend three hours with him. Um, they have to report to exactly where they'll be. So I think um, Jeff said some dumbass shit like a men's type of clothing store. So they have to spend three hours in, um, in or by a men's clothing store. And Anissa said that that was fine with her because she is definitely hoping to bend it over and bust it open inside of the dressing room. You know, those are her hopes and dreams and goals for the day. So, um, yeah, she pulls up to the building. She pulls up to the halfway house and she calls Jeff to let him know that, you know, she is there. She's ready. Like, just come on out. Let's go. And he said, no, um, I'm not going to be coming out. He lets her know that he's not going to be coming out because he was not able to get the ankle monitor put on that is required for them to leave. And this is where I said, that's lie number one. Um, that's a lie because, you know, I have not always been the rich white woman that you see um, upon you right about now. Um, there was definitely a point in life where I was dibbling and dabbling with thugs and people that were incarcerated and then they had to go from the jail to the halfway house, okay? I was that girl back in my teens and early, early 20s, okay? I was that bitch. So, um, I do know how the halfway house works and what the halfway house is. So, if Jeff had three hours that he could be out, you leave when you're allowed to leave. 
you come back when you are supposed to come back. So if he had three hours to be out, if he was out for three hours and 10 minutes, whenever he bought that ass back, guess what? He would go to jail jail, not to the halfway house because it is your responsibility to leave at your allotted time and come back at your allotted time. And an ankle monitor has absolutely nothing to do with that. So if you leave a halfway house and you decide that you just want to be a fucking runaway train and you don't want to come back, they don't give a shit about that because guess what? You will get caught. It might not be today, it might not be this week, but we will catch your ass and you're going back to jail, jail to start from scratch, okay? So that's up to you if you wanna do right or not. So um, that was lie number one, that he had to have an ankle monitor. And we also know that you don't have to have an ankle monitor because we remember Christiana being in the halfway house, okay? She got in trouble all the time at the halfway house, but at no point did she have on a fucking ankle monitor. So you tried it, Jeff. And we denied it. Oh, this leaves Anissa highly disappointed because she realizes that she's not going to get to see Jeff today. And she's like, wow, you know, this is just really a lot. And he said, yeah, I know, babe. But, you know, while you're here, I just want to know if you have any more money that you could put on my books because um, I'm fresh out. And she was like, how are you out of money when I just put like $100 on your stuff? like recently and he was like yeah you know but it's really expensive in here that was line number two that's where line number two came in play because it's not that expensive in there jeff if she gave you a hundred dollars <laughs> let me tell you something you could have spent thirty dollars on your necessities you know what i'm saying soap washcloth deodorant toothpaste toothbrush we're just gonna say all of that kind of stuff added up to a smooth thirty dollars that left you seventy dollars to get all of the ramen noodles potato chips sodas everything else that you needed to be able to live especially if if she was just giving you that for the week or for the next two weeks you know what i'm saying when you need to make something happen for yourself, you can make something happen for yourself. So if that left you $70 to, to, to get that, those kind of little, you know, cheap snacks with, then you didn't do right. But I'm going to tell you why I know you lying. She gave you plenty of money to be able to live off of while you was at that halfway house. You took that extra $70 and you went and purchased whatever it is that has already made your teeth fall out. You took them $70 and you went and purchased whatever it is that makes your eyes bloodshot red and drop some low and makes you look very much sleepy. The same thing that you purchased when you was at that motherfucking bus stop and you came around the corner looking like the motherfucking green eyed monster. Okay, that the, the motherfucking red eyed monster like that's what you took that extra money and did. Because then you said, well, do you still have that little bag of goodies that you were supposed to bring today? And she said, yeah. And he said, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to see you. But what you can do is drop that bag off at the picnic table over here on the property. And once you leave, I can come outside and get it. And she said, so I can't even see you to hand you the bag? And he said, no, no, you can't. You can't. So that was lie number three. And at that point, me and Anissa was over it because she did that. She followed suit. She took the bag over there on the picnic table and she walked away. I don't know if she went in there and put no money on his books. I pray to God that she didn't, but she probably did. When she got in her confessional, she got in the car, did a confessional. And she said, um, you know, I'm starting to believe what Kyle said. Because it's looking like I'm getting played at this point again. And Cal made a point and said, when you feed a stray dog, they will continue to come back because they know where their food is. And I said, yeah, mm -hmm. Cal told you right. Cal been telling you right from the beginning. But, you know, you just still want to do what you want to do. So, um, she said that she is just, you know, she's really looking crazy at Jeff at this point because she is feeling used. And um, she had actually washed her pussy to the gods because she had planned on throwing her legs back. And, and now that's not going to happen. So, you know, she's trying to give that ass away. She's trying to give her love away, Jeff. And you don't want none of it. You know what I'm saying? All you want is her money and everything that she can actually do for you. 
So I don't know. Like Jeff, to me, you're the dummy in this situation because who else? <laughs> if not Anissa, who else wants you? That was Anissa and Jeff for this week. Like, child, I, at this point, listen, Cal, when you and Jeff get to fighting, I hope you knock the rest of that fool teeth out because he is really trying it. He is playing that Anissa face. He playing that our face, and I ain't buying none of it. I think Anissa buying some of it, but I'm not. But y'all, that was this week's episode of Love After Lockup. I hope you have enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed doing it. You already know we'll be next back next week to do this all over again. And while I have your attention, I do want to say that um, I am going to try to dedicate this weekend to catching up on um, replying back to all of my comments um, on all of my videos. But um, especially these Love After Lockup videos because I know some of you all had questions. A lot of you all left compliments and please know that I have already read them all. I see them all. I just have not had time to respond to them. And I'm definitely going to respond because I, I'm a YouTube viewer myself. And when I go on people's channels, I always hit like, I always subscribe. I always um, leave a comment, even if it's just to say, hey, you know, just want to let you know, great video, whatever, whatever. And I get highly irritated. I be, I take it so personal when I don't get a reply back. So um, I definitely don't want to be that bitch on my channel. Um, and I definitely want to make sure that I get back to each and every one of you because I am so appreciative for every like, every subscribe, and every comment because that is what helps these videos circulate to the next viewer, okay? So, with that being said, I want you to be happy, be healthy, be safe. This is your girl P-Hope and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.